Hey everyone, welcome back to JLXP 10 Thoughts Edition going into week 8 of 2022 Summer Split LCS, which is the final week in the regular season and coincidentally a super week. So week 1 was 3 games, week 8 is 3 games, which makes the 18 game regular season. And going into the article this week, I wanted to look back a little bit at the same point in time we were at in spring to show just how much can change between the final week of the regular season and the end of playoffs. So in spring, through 15 games, Cloud9 was first at 12-3, and three, and Summit had pretty much locked up the MVP by then. TL was second at 11-4, and four, and then EG was actually tied with Dignitas and Golden Guardians for 5th, 6th, and 7th place at 7-8. and eight. And then we all remember what happens. Five weeks later, EG makes a loser's bracket run, knocks TL out of the finals. They beat 100 Thieves 3-0. They lift the trophy. And the first and second place team heading into the final Super Week end up finishing third and fourth. So that type of craziness doesn't happen every split. But the fact that it happened just last split makes you remember how possible that is. So with that as a primer, that... Even though these teams have played a lot of league, a lot can still change. We're going to get into the 10 thoughts. And because alphabetically, the number one starts before EG. That's why we have EG in the League of Legends standings before uh, or below 100 Thieves. One of these days, I want to do a reverse alphabetical order standing just to so 100 Thieves doesn't always get to be first. But alas, here they are. And the question I have written down here is how many games in a row can they win? So they are on a seven-game win streak. And they are 6-0 and in the second round robin. A couple fun facts here. Since LCS switched to this format, which is 10-team, double round robin, best of one, nobody has gone 9-0 and in the second round robin. 100 Thieves has a chance to do that if they beat FlyQuest, CLG, and TL. Pretty tough schedule, by the way. Actually, in terms of number of wins that their opponents have, this is the highest. Although it's only a combined record of 27 and 18, which is a 60% win rate. So no one has an insane schedule this week, but 100 Thieves actually does have the hardest. But they've just been super, super good. And one of the most impressive things about that win streak is they haven't been behind in gold at 15 minutes in any of those wins. So they haven't even had to make a comeback. They've just been consistently beating people in every facet of the game. So really, really impressed with the team. The more that they continue this win streak, it's really hard not to be, to be completely honest. I will say that they are definitely drafting to win regular season, which I think is a good call. Getting first or second seed is very important come playoffs. It means you only have to win one best of five to qualify for Worlds. But we're really not seeing much experimentation out of 100 Thieves, which I think is helping them stay consistent. And I do like. I don't think this should be a knock on them. But I think it's one of the reasons they found a lot of wins, aside from them being a really experienced team who's played together for a long time. So I hope they can do it. I hope they can actually go on this win streak. Uh, And if they close out this season on a win streak, it would be a 10-game win streak, which is the second longest of all time in an older format that played 28 games in the regular season. 2014 Spring Cloud 9 had a 13-game win streak going in the playoffs, and then they swept playoffs as well. So, I mean, if 100 Thieves goes in on a 10-game win streak, they have to be the favorites for finals, even though just a couple weeks ago, we were all saying that was EG because of how impressive they looked. And speaking of EG, that's going to be our next team. They play Golden Guardians, Dignitas, and C9, so a much easier schedule. They actually have... In terms of win rate, the easiest schedule of any team in the LCS this split, a combined record of 15 and 30 between Golden Guardians, Dignitas, and C9. But they did lose again last week. And the question I'm asking in 10 Thoughts is how should we react? Because they've lost to 100 Thieves, Team Liquid, and CLG, who are the teams that are pretty much directly next to them in the standings. That is the top four, including themselves. So... Keeping that, even transferring back to Spring Split, they were a team that actually didn't beat teams above them and were very consistent against teams below them. This split, they are still incredibly consistent against teams below them, and they've split games with pretty much everyone else in the top of the standings. So maybe their dominance has been a little bit overstated, even if they're still going to be looking good going into best of fives. And 
I also think that playing at home against TL definitely distracted from their focus. What we saw on stage, and I'm I'm pretty confident saying this just because I've witnessed so many scrims, really just looked like a scrim. The way that once Bwipo got a little bit ahead, they just kind of kept throwing themselves at the problem. A lot of teams do that in scrims. And then if it goes wrong, they just say GG and they leave the game at 10 minutes and you get a little salty at them because they quit a game 10 minutes in. But then they say, well, what do you want us to do? Do you want to play another one? And that's just kind of how it goes. But they were on stage, they were on stage, even though they were playing from home and uh, you couldn't remake. So they just kind of lost to Team Liquid. I, I hope that they can actually show more focus, even if their opponents don't necessarily have uh, the strength to for EG to kind of rise to the occasion. But they've been consistent against teams that are below them in the standing so far. And I, I kind of think that the scope of their loss to TL was a bit of an aberration. I think I'm not saying that if they were on stage and were able to focus more, like it was in a scrim, that they somehow would have smash TL, I think they still probably would have lost because TL played well, but the manner in which they did so just seemed very scrim-like to me, which was pretty disappointing, but I'm not going to hold it against them as much as if they were on stage is the long-winded way of making that point. Next team on this list, Team Liquid. They played Dignitas, Golden Guardians, and 100 Thieves. Second easiest schedule in terms of opponent win rate this week. So even, even if EG ran it down, they still beat the number one team in the league at the time, which is a huge momentum builder for a team that started 3-0, then went 1-1 five consecutive times, and then beat FlyQuest and EG. So that is so good for the pressure relief that that team has been under, and I think can hopefully allow them to look at the positives of what they've been doing, because they are still the best early game team in the league statistically. And I don't necessarily think that they got way better at the things they've been struggling with, which would be mid-game coordination and actually closing out games. But they were just way better at winning early game even more. And if you reach that critical mass, you don't need to have this macro wizardry to win the game. You just beat people with your wallet. Like, I think Team Liquid should just continue to be dominant in lane, draft generally to do so, and that's going to set them up most for success. Also, fun story with all the mustaches that we saw. This could end up being a long-term trend if TL keeps winning because we asked Whipple about it while he was on the desk, and he said every week that they were going 1-1, once it happened like three times in a row, he was trying to do something to break them out of the curse. I think one of them was, oh, I'm going to stream every day. Another one was, oh, yeah, I'm just going to have this mustache. And that's why they have the fake mustaches. Now they are going to keep it, I think, until they lose. So if they 3-0 here and make any type of playoff runs, we're going to see a lot of TL mustaches. I'm just saying. And if they somehow win the split, they're going to have to have TL mustaches at Worlds. So if you like mustaches, maybe that's a reason to root for Team Liquid. <laughs> okay, next team on the list. Tied with TL in the standing, CLG. Um, <clears throat> man, I got a little hopeful for CLG in my last podcast that I did Monday. Uh, they play TSM 100 Thieves and Immortals, so not the hardest schedule, not the easiest. And the thing I wrote is, is CLG actually good? And it's kind of scary to talk about because for the past three years or so, anytime there's a shred of hope and you say CLG is going to be good, they're almost just guaranteed to lose their next game. But I really haven't been this excited about CLG in a very long time. Not only from a player perspective, but like if you haven't seen the little one minute videos they're doing that they did for Dokla, that they did for Palafox, like they're they're actually building up their players in a pretty genuine way. They have ground up their staff a little bit. They legitimately appear to have five coaches who all have somewhat defined roles that can still contribute to the team winning. And they didn't bail on their players at the first sign of them not dominating on stage. Most orgs in the league, I think bench contracts after spring split 
or look for a different jungler because he was leading the league in deaths and was making big mid-game mistakes in the majority of their losses, but has been one of their catalysts for success in the summer split, I think because they have an environment where you can actually make mistakes and improve, which is very encouraging for this team. One more thing. This is more of a fun fact than me saying it's really going to happen. The two times in COG's history that they ended the split with a 13-5 and record, they won the LCS championship. If they 3-0, their 10-5 and will become 13-5. and Who knows? You know? Would be neat. They've gone 12 and 4 a couple times and didn't, or sorry, 12 and 6 a couple times and didn't win the title either. No matter what happens from this point, if they lost every game, this year should still be looked at as a success for COG because of where they were. They were dead last in the LCS for two years. And now they have an outside shot at going to Worlds. So the next five weeks are going to be super interesting and encouraging for COG regardless of if they succeed or not. Next team here, Cloud9. They play Immortals, TSM, and then close the year with EG. And I am actually relatively fed up with this team because they have so much talent, two times MVP blabber, Fudge, who has great game understanding, and above average laning. I'm not going to say great laning in top lane. Jensen is the second greatest LCS mid laner of all time. I know that when he's on, he is probably the best player in the LCS. It's just intermittent with how he can find that level of performance. And Berserker is absolutely cracked mechanically. Zven still adjusting to the role swap, but has had some really big games. But like the eight and seven record, I wrote this, just reminds me a lot of EG when EG was entering week eight at seven and eight. You know that there are a lot of ingredients there but you just don't know if they're going to be able to put it together. In spring, EG definitely did. So far, C9 has not. And I've seen, at least from the games on stage, more regression and not as clear of an upward line. So C9 did have that week in week six where they looked pretty solid. But last week, their O2 just looked quite bad. And that's going to cause a stir of conversations. And if they, don't, if they don't solve that the right way, then there's a good chance they could be in trouble because this is one of those teams that we talked about at the start of the year, the four teams that were really gunning for a world spot. It's going to be a disaster for one, maybe two of them, if COG makes that noise. But getting into playoffs on a good note, I think matters a lot for C9. EG did get into playoffs on a good note in spring. They really crushed Super Week to be able to get up in playoff seating before making the run in playoffs. Anyway, next team, FlyQuest. They play Hunter Thieves, Immortals, and TSM. And this one is this one is tough. Like, I wrote that it was fun while it lasted because the FlyQuest hype train is definitely derailed. They are on the four-game losing streak after their 7-4 and four start. I think based on their opponents this week, playing both Immortals and TSM, they should be able to win those games. And if they do that, they'll end at 9-9, nine and nine, which is the same score they had in spring, even though it felt like the team had improved. But I'd say, I'd say some of the weaknesses we were worried about at the start of spring that it didn't look like they had, like Philip, when people said he was inexperienced and not necessarily ready for the LCS, he was fine. He was not making those mistakes. He was not getting punished. But there, I'd say it was most evident in the CLG game where there was a play that FlyQuest had to concede third Drake because Philip just ran himself out of mana in side lane, recalled without teleport. COD took the Drake so they couldn't threaten Soul Point. And then at the end of the game, the play that actually sets up the double TP, I'm going to do I'm likely going to do a Telestrator about this on LCS on Friday. He just needed to spend an extra two seconds killing the minion wave because the instant he teleported into Baron, Dokla teleported into his base. And that's what started the whole thing that allowed COG to do the double TP and win the game was, was Phillips' inexperience, not clearing that minion wave. He will never make that mistake again, but it did, I think, cost FlyQuest that game. 
And on top of that, we talked about it last week. Jose Dodo, Jose Diodo, and Takui have not been as dominant as they were early on in the split. So it's just hard for this team to find advantages that are consistently working to get them wins. I do think they will break their loss streak. It'll probably get to five games. I don't expect them to beat 100 Thieves, but then I think they can. They got a good chance of taking down a Morris on TSM. Speaking of which, TSM, they play CLG, C9, and FlyQuest. That is a tough schedule for them because all of those teams are above them in the standings and difficult for them to beat. Uh, also need to mention, unfortunately for myself, that I made a bet during week two of LCS where we had to pick a team outside of the big four that would make top five. Uh, this was not as premeditated as a bet as the other ones I've won, where I had Raz pick a win number for FlyQuest in spring when he was overhyping them. I think he said like 12. They got nine. And then the one with Dash picking who would beat EG first. And I just picked first and grabbed 100 Thieves. Those were good bets. This one I did not plan. Raz had first pick. It was right after a COG win, and he just picked COG. And then it was week two, so I was high on the Maple hype train. They'd just beaten TL. Speaker was happy. Tactical was still grooving. Hooney was still there. Yeah, TSM can get top five, I thought. Technically, technically it is still possible. They just need to beat COG, C9, and FlyQuest. C9 need to lose to Immortals, TSM, and EG, and FlyQuest needs to lose to either 100 Thieves or Immortals, and then TSM has to win the tiebreaker against C9. That's it. Only all of those things. So, yeah, I am definitely going to be eating a habanero pepper this week, and that's that. But I do think that TSM has an outside chance at making upsets in these games. I thought their one-in-one week was okay last week. The solo Fiora game, I don't think they should do again. I think they need to keep on him on Bruiser Champions. And then I think they actually legitimately have a chance still to just win random games. I don't think they're going to make noise in best of fives, but of the teams that are fighting for that 7th and 8th loser's bracket playoff spot, TSM's definitely the favorite for that. Even if they 0-3, they might still get it. But I think give them a 35% chance to win each of those games, COG, C9, Fly, they'll probably get one of them and make it comfortably in with six wins. Next team, Golden Guardians. They play COG, C9, and FlyQuest. And yep, if you missed it, there is confirmation of the turmoil at Golden Guardians. So they tweeted out on Wednesday that their longtime GM, Dannon, uh, will no longer be with the team. I don't think this is necessarily that big of a surprise. Dannon clarified as well that th- there was an option for them to pick up 2023 and they were nice enough to notify him now instead of at the end of the year. So he gets to take some time off. But you just look at the trajectory of this team and it makes sense that someone needed to be like held accountable because they, if, if we actually just kind of go back in time for Golden Guardians, because this is possibly the last week we're going to be talking about them. They were... In 2020, the team with FBI, Closer, Huhi, that 3 0 the eventual champions, TSM, in the upper bracket of the Summer Split Playoffs. They then went up 2-0 against TSM again before the TSM Miracle Run started and they 3 0 But they were really close, really close to being good. Then they got a much lower budget than they were expecting going into 2021, sold all of their players to 100 Thieves, who then went on to win titles, and that core is still the best core in the league. So then two years ago, they said, all right, we did it once. We're going to do it again. Let's develop some talent. They were by far the worst team in spring of 2021. They showed improvement in summer of 2021. Year two of a rebuild, especially in league, that's when you're supposed to start seeing results. They had a good first half of spring. They meandered a bit in the second half of spring. It still wasn't there in the middle of summer here. So they made some drastic changes and those just failed horribly. So when you when you zoom out though and you look at the two-year rebuild plan, you can say like, hey man, we're in year two of this rebuild and we're eighth on the longest losing streak in the league. That's a failure. So I think it makes sense that they're looking for a new GM. Um, not saying it's necessarily his fault. There's a lot of things that can go on in an organization. I don't know the details. But it does make sense that someone is held accountable for the 
the trek of Golden Guardians. Also, they just got wiped out of Proving Grounds. I'm recording this Wednesday night uh, without a Blaze Olive playing in Proving Grounds. So I believe that a Blaze Olive and Ole will probably be back in the lineup for the final week of the split. And hell, man, wouldn't this be a story of a miracle run? I don't think it's going to happen, but like they're not out of playoffs. They have the same number of wins as Immortals. So if they take some games, they can still make loser's bracket of playoffs and try and make some noise. So they've been through a lot. I think you guys should support the players. It's been a tough year, and let's see what they can do. Ninth team, Immortals. They play C9, Fly, and CLG. Man, all these teams at the bottom have rough schedules in the last week. So it's going to be tough for them to make some noise and differentiate themselves for those 7th and 8th spots. And I think Immortals is going to be in a similar mindset of TSM where like, they just want to make playoffs. And like zooming out a bit on this team as well, if they don't make it, they did show a lot of improvement throughout Summer Split. I'm happy specifically for Kenby, actually, that these last four weeks have transpired because he looked so rough at the very start. And it's because the team had no practice together. And it was his first games in LCS, and it's like the nightmare of the top academy prospect to go to LCS and just immediately lose. But I think they've looked a lot better. They've lost a lot of really close games against good teams. So of the 8, 9, 10, I do think Immortals is the strongest team. But we're this late in the year and they have so few wins. Who knows? This could very well be their last week. We'll just have to wait and see. If I had to guess, I would say TSM and Immortals get those final two spots with Golden Guardians and Dig not making it. Dig would be the team that I have with the lowest chance of making it through. And they're going to be the last team I, I talk about here. Uh, they play Team Liquid, EG, and Golden Guardians. So with their current win count, which is three, Immortals and Golden Guardians are at four, TSM is at five. It is fairly safe to assume that this will be the last weekend for Dignitas. And it has definitely been a very disappointing year for them. They have now had three years in a row where their spring record was better than their summer, which is a difficult story to have when you're a lower tier team that is trying to make a run. They kind of sneak playoffs in spring and then fall off in summer. And that's just a crappy way to end the year. So I hope they can do some reflecting, find a way to come back. Uh, You definitely want these teams at the bottom to find ways to contend a little bit to keep the LCS interesting. Dignitas has not been that team for the past four years, and we'll have to see them in 2023, what they do. I'm probably not talking about them on on 10 Thoughts after this. So I think that does it for this one, guys. Uh, 23 minutes in, gave thoughts on every team. A lot can change. A lot can change from Super Week into playoffs. Playoffs is long as well. The, The format is going to be three playing six and four playing five in week one. Then there's a bit of a break. And then we'll have like four playoff series a week for two consecutive weeks as the losers and winners brackets are playing at the same time. But most important thing to remember, the one and two seed are very important. It's highly likely 100 Thieves and EG get those unless they have some level of collapse. The only scenario that you could maybe see is like, if we're just saying that like strong beats strong, 100 Thieves, they play CLG TL, EG then plays GG Dig C9, and TL plays Dig GG 100 Thieves. Like if TL beats 100 Thieves and CLG upsets 100 Thieves, you could maybe see TL jumping or likewise, like CLG could do the same thing if they beat 100 Thieves and also TSM and Immortals, they could maybe jump 100 Thieves. So that also means 100 Thieves has to stop their win streak and they are literally the best team in the LCS through the second half, so not super likely. But if you want some fireworks, that could happen. And we'll have a foldy sheet to explain it all as you watch throughout the weekend. So remember LCS Friday, Saturday, Sunday this week. It is Super Week. I'll see you there.